Good day, good people. It's Dave here again to talk tech. With your boy, Jacob. And today we're previewing a brand new graphics card from AMD. Has the red team finally announced a gaming version of its new 7 nanometer <laughs> Vega cards? No. Oh. Has it bought the next gen Navi architecture forward? N no. Oh. Well, what the hell are we meant to be excited about then? Polaris. Another Polaris card. Polaris? <laughs> So that GPU architecture, which was released into the mainstream consciousness back in 2016, a two-year-old design, that's AMD's great gaming graphics hope for 2018? Yes, Polaris, the GPU architecture which brought us the RX 480 and the RX 580 graphics cards is back. And this month we're expecting to get hands-on with the new AMD Radeon RX 590. Though admittedly AMD has yet to announce anything officially itself. Considering the growing groundswell of rumours and leaked RX 590 packaging, however, I guess we can pretty much take it as Radeon Red that it is actually happening. And we've also got a pretty clear idea of the tech that's going to go inside that leaked packaging too, with a rumoured November 15 release date filtering out of a bunch of Chinese forums. Though as always, you should probably take such rumours with a pinch of salt. So, with AMD calling it an RX 590, that makes it a high-end GPU, with a memory bus above the 256-bit level and built for 4K gaming. That was how the Radeon guys originally envisioned the naming scheme for Polaris when it was first launched, after all. Well, no. Honestly, from all the information that's been leaked out around the new RX 590, it looks like a relatively mild refresh of the RX 580, except it's built on the 12 nanometer process node as opposed to the 14 nanometer design used for the 400 and previous 500 series GPUs. Which would make the RX 590's GPU another 36 CU chip with 2,304 graphics core next cores and 8GB of GDDR5 video memory. Though because of that GPU die shrink, there's a little more efficiency built into the card, and that means AMD and its partners can boost the GPU clock speeds of the RX 590. Where the base RX 580 was running at 1,340MHz under boost, the reported RX 590 cards we've heard about run from anywhere between 1,545MHz and 1,580MHz. That's a pretty hefty clock speed bump over the previous generation. But given that very little else has changed regarding the actual GPU itself, outside of the boost-enabled 12 nanometer die shrink, you can understand why AMD is being rather understated with its naming scheme. This is a relatively minor GPU update on the surface, so it makes sense for it to sit still within the existing RX 500 series family. We're also expecting the node shrink and mature production process to allow this Polaris 30 GPU to have more overclocking headroom than its forebears too. The 400 and 500 series cards couldn't really be pushed much further than their original rating, but there are leaked 3D marked benchmark scores that have them running from anywhere between 1645 MHz to 1680 MHz. Those look like factory overclocked cards, reportedly from PowerColor and XFX, being pushed even further than their out-of-the-box GPU frequencies. And that bodes well for the gaming potential baked inside the 12 nanometer Polaris silicon. One of the reasons we're so confident about the existence of an RX 590 is that the 3D Mark database has been awash with pre-release testing of the new AMD card. Uh, there also have been some Final Fantasy XV benchmarks leaked too, but they're so painfully unreliable I'm not 100% convinced it can even report GPUs correctly. But the 3D Mark database has provided us with some very interesting numbers, which have allowed us to do our own little bit of preemptive comparative benchmarking too. The early time spy benchmarks were run on what looks like a reference RX 590 using a Ryzen 7 2700 CPU on an X370 motherboard with 16GB of DDR4. We've closely matched the system ourselves and tested both an RX 580 and a GTX 1060 to see how the current gen cards compare with the upcoming RX 590 GPU. And comparing our tests against the leaked 3D Mark scores, the RX 590 is operating between 9 and 10% faster than the current top Polaris GPU. That's a pretty healthy performance bump over the RX 580, but it also highlights a 15% lead over the 6GB version of Nvidia's popular GTX 1060. And that's the number which explains exactly why AMD has chosen to launch what is, on the surface, a relatively minor GPU update, and why this then could be an incredibly smartly timed move for Team Radeon. Nvidia rules the roost when it comes to gaming graphics cards. The RTX 2080 Ti is the most powerful GeForce GPU that's ever been released into the wild, offering gaming performance well in excess of what even the $3,000 Titan V could deliver. But it's still mighty expensive, and so are all of the new 20 series GPUs. The cheapest of the new Turing graphics cards is $499 for the reference clocked RTX 2070, with nothing at all being spoken about the more mainstream level of the GeForce GPU world. 
we know nothing about any potential RTX 2060, GTX 2060, or even RTX 2060 Ti. So that leaves the aging GTX 1060 as the only mainstream GPU NVIDIA has to offer in the mass volume sub $300 market. That's where the highest number of graphics cards get sold, and especially at this time of year. So it makes sense for AMD to spend a little R&D money to get a refreshed 12 nanometer Polaris GPU out of the door, and pump some extra marketing dollar into the channel to let everyone know it has the fastest gaming graphics card you can buy for under $300. So long as AMD and its partners are realistic about the pricing that is. Yeah, at the moment you can pick up a GTX 1060 for around $260 or £220, and an 8GB RX580 for around $220 or £200. If the RX 590 is only around 10 to 15% quicker than those cars, the new Radeon needs to arrive for comfortably less than $300 if it's truly going to make some impact. And given that the 12 nanometer node is fairly mature by this point and yields ought to be excellent by now, AMD should be able to get the RX 590 out of the door at a great price. Though, even if AMD does aim to more for the $300 mark, the noise around its launch could still push people towards the RX 580, which itself still just about outperforms Nvidia's GTX 1060, which is currently more expensive. So from both a technological and a marketing point of view then, AMD's decision to get an RX 590 release before the end of the month looks like quite a smart one. So that's the new mainstream RX 590 graphics card AMD is dropping possibly later this month. And despite not really anything that new, it's a quite exciting GPU for PC gamers that don't have a grand to drop on an NVIDIA card. Yeah, so thanks for watching, and if you've liked what you've seen, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring that freaking bell. Love you. Bye. Bye.